welcome back, Frill Nation, to a second unboxing video on OK Bloomer. I know that that's completely the content I was going for from the beginning. That's exactly what you expected from my channel. So I figured why not give you more of the same. Today what I have is I have a box from Bayi. B-U-Y-E-E, -E, which is a shopping service that handles Mercari, Rakuten, Yahoo, Japan auctions and shopping, as well as I believe one or two others. I've been using Bai for about a year or two now. It's really easy to use. It's very easy to make an account. You can just use your Facebook information, which is what I've chosen to do. It's not something I always like to do, but I just did it because it was fast and sometimes I get tired of making passwords all of the time. This is not sponsored by the way. So I do use Bai a lot. I do really like their service. They do kind of stack up the fees. Say for example, if you're ordering multiple items, you have to wait for them all to actually get to the warehouse. And then if you want them all shipped into one package, which can save you significantly on overseas shipping, they do charge a consolidation fee, which is usually around 1,000 yen, so around nine to 10 dollars US. But overall, especially when I'm just trying to find a great deal on things, or if I wanna order a bunch of accessories, things like that, and I don't wanna to have to pay a ton to ship each individual item, I've found that's to generally the way I prefer to go. So what I have today is I have a box I just got in. I don't have a lot in here, but I am pretty excited about it to share it with you. So I'm just going to use the utility blade, open her up. The shipping was very fast. I did use DHL, which I know I've complained about in the past, but especially right now because there aren't really a lot of overseas shipping options and because I'm okay with spending extra for it to come here in like a week as opposed to sea mail, which can take months. It's not a bad option. I do prefer EMS when I can, though. Okay, since so we do see that it is all well packaged, just got a bunch of those airbags. I do deflate them and throw them away. Okay. And so when they consolidate, this is what you get. They literally just take your few packages that have come in and they throw them in a box for you. So let's start. I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna start with the smallest package. Don't mind that my hair is slowly losing all structural integrity. It's just a thing that curly hair does. It just escapes the confines that we have given it. Ooh, yeah! So this is a Baby the Star Shine Bright Makeup mm. Compact. Not a makeup compact, but a mirror. And I do have a mirror that I keep around in my bags. Um, it's one that I actually, like, I bought it cheap one years ago and I was able to take it apart and recover it with a different fabric. But I thought, you know what? Create yourself. Oh, okay. Now you can look. There you are. You can see my great little camera there. This is in beautiful condition. There's no scratches. There's no marring. This is. It's a little dusty. It's just a nice plush black velvet. It's got the baby emblem on there. But this will be a really nice piece to have. As a plus size Lolita, it's hard to know when it is and isn't feasible to shop from brands. So one of the ways that I think the plus size community can show support for a lot of brands, even if you don't want to go, you know, full tilt and buy a brand new jumper skirt all the time, especially with how many plus and plus plus releases Meta has been doing recently. Accessories are always a great way to sort of help support the brand. Although I did buy these items secondhand, so in a way they're not really the brands firsthand, but it's supporting other people who support the brands. Plus, I don't think this is even available on baby's site, so it doesn't hold closed, I'm noticing. Looks like maybe there was supposed to be, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, a, a pin or something. Yeah, now, now it's all about my face, of course. But yeah, so it does kind of flop open. Yeah. Okay, maybe it holds okay. Yeah, it kind of flops open easily. 
whatever. It's gonna like get tossed around in my brand purses while I'm out with my girlfriend, so. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Without cutting the items inside. Another okay. thing that kind of bums me out sometimes. Um, hey, close it, child! What bums me out is Bai can't show everything Mercari has. They only show items that the Mercari sellers are okay with mailing overseas. Or at least we'll sell it to me more Okay. Oh, this is good. What? It came... Oh, because it's the color. Okay. Oh, this is cute. Angelic pretty multi chocolate jacket. Probably has a proper name, but I don't know what it is. Neither does AP, so whatever. Don't come for me. This is in really nice condition. I really like the collar. So the collar is not detachable. Oh, no. Nope. I lied. It is. So it's got these little buttons. Yeah, don't focus. That's fine. And so it just comes unpinned. Oh, weird. Okay. So when you unbutton it, the other collar is literally tucked inside. So instead of it just laying over it, you literally tuck the plain collar into the fur collar. Huh, okay. It's actually a clever way to do it because then that way you don't have to worry about when you're running or whatever. If it flops around, no one's going to see that you have just stacked collars like a deflated frat boy from the mid 2000s. So, all right. This is super cute. I'm going to try it on later too. Put that down. Okay. And last but not least. We've got, this is very secured. It's one of the things that's kind of fun is always seeing how, so it was securely packaged, but like, bro, they didn't even put like a bag around it. When I ship things, what I like to do, and I'm extra, so, that's probably why like this person clearly is just cheap and don't want to have to pay a ton in postage to send it not even sending it to me and paying a ton in postage that way but sending it to the buy warehouse where they would store it but when i ship stuff what i like to do because you have crazy people running around just slashing at things with box cutters and utility blades is i will wrap it in some plain tissue paper first and kind of fold it up carefully to protect the garment and then I actually will put it into like a plastic shopping bag and the tissue paper is to protect it from the shopping bag just in case of heat or anything like that so that the plastic doesn't melt onto the fibers and the shopping bag is to protect it from if there is any damage to the outside of the box and it happens to get wet or get exposed to a spill or anything it'll offer a layer of protection to keep that garment safe. So, for them just kind of wad this dress up, shove it into a tiny ass box like this, like, sis, what are you doing? So, but this is, this is a cute one. This is Baby the Star Shine Bright, Princess Honey's Tea Salon, I believe it's called. Okay, ooh, came with the waist ties, came with the back lacing, came with the front lacing. It's just a really soft, lightweight, thin cotton twill. Really cute. I don't have a lot of black in my wardrobe. I tend to go for jewel tones. I don't really go for a lot of pastels, but I thought this print was just so sweet. It is a little, it's a little washed out, which I think is always going to be an issue when dealing with black sweet prints in general, is that sometimes the pastel colors do tend to get a little bit washed out and faded looking just because of the sharp contrast between the background and the foreground colors. But I thought that this was sort of delicate and pretty, and I do already have one of this also in black, and so my end goal is to franken them together at some point. I have a pile of dresses that I'm going to be frankening. So now I'm gonna try the jacket on. 
And I know what you're saying, like, okay, but if you can't fit into unaltered brand dresses, like, what help do you have for fitting into one single jacket? You know, just, just have faith, all right? Oh, it's tiny. That size of it, because this jacket came in multiple sizes. That's fine, don't tell me if you- Oh, shit, it's got a little inside pocket! It's got- Oh, it's got two little inside pockets! Are these false pockets, or are these real pockets? Alright, real pockets on the outside, too. Alright. Let's fuck it up! Okay. Ooh, the arms are tight. Oh, yeah. This is fat guy in a little coat time. Also, look at, look at how short the sleeves are. I'm only like five foot two. So it's not going to work as a jacket, which I think we kind of knew. To be honest, I knew that from the beginning, and I had no intentions of wearing this as a jacket at all. I'm going to wear it as a capelet, which means I'm going to cut it up. The first thing one must do when altering brand is try the jacket on again to see if it has somehow magically changed size while we were switching out of our jumper skirt and into work clothes, which in this case means my quarantine pajamas. Yes, I am wearing my makeup and yes, I am still talking in the video, even though I knew I was going to replace the audio with a voiceover anyway. I measured the sleeve size to ensure it will actually give me enough room in the bus to work as intended. Now we will grab our seam rippers and begin the process of making brand purists hearts bleed. Because this is a raglan or baseball tee style coat, all I will have to do is cut open the sleeve seams and the side seams of the jacket, then sew them together as one big piece. This should be enough to give me the room I need to get the jacket to fit. First I'm starting off by removing the buckles and belt loop detail from the sleeves, setting them aside for later use. Once that is done, I begin opening up the hem of the jacket. The hem of this jacket has a facing of the same material as the outer shell. A facing is a narrow strip of material attached as a lining that is usually either the same material as the outer shell or a similar color and a different quality than the rest of the lining. This is done as a nice finishing touch and to add stability to the garment hem. With a raglan or baseball tee design, instead of the traditional shoulder and arm side, the sleeve forms the shoulder and connects up to the neck hole. I love this style of top and I actually use it pretty frequently as a pattern for regular t-shirts that I make for myself. It's a really easy design and because it doesn't have a traditional arm side hole, you don't have to deal with the absolute torture that is easing a sleeve, especially when working with knits. Now this garment also has a delicate chocolate scallop lace trim on the hem and cuffs. When sewing it together in a capelet, it will be important to keep that trim intact. However, I did need to cut it at one point so that I can seamlessly, get it, sewing joke, merge it in with the sleeve cuff. When I cut scallop lace, I try to cut in a narrow point, or at least one that will easily be sewn into the seam allowance to keep it from fraying and coming apart with wear. It is also necessary to separate the sleeve part way from the sides of the jacket, as the sides of a raglan and the underside of the shirt sleeve are still cut into a J-shape or an upside down candy cane so that the garment can comfortably fit under your armpit. We will be trimming away this excess material to give us a diagonal line for attaching the sleeve to the side seam so that it will look as if this was the intentional look of the capelet. Here is a quick picture I took showing the sleeve spread out and broken free of its strappings. A critical part of the sewing process is to fuck around on your phone for 20 minutes as a treat. Then I started work on the other side, setting up my Twitch stream first so people could watch me fuck around for 20 minutes, get bored, and wander off to do something else. There's a reason why so many seamstresses don't do many long-form videos of their projects, and it's because most of that time is sticking around on their phones or screaming into the void when they realize they have to rip out a seam they just finished stitching. I sped up this footage to 500% and this video is still what, 40 minutes long? You're welcome. I'm sorry, please watch it until the end, I need your validation. Here I am talking about the weird 2-3 to three inch long section of top stitching in a sleeve. Did they sew it together badly or something? No! This is how you sew up a jacket with faced, clean, pressed hems and cuffs with no visible stitching. A section of the sleeve lining is left unsewn while everything else is put together. Then, at the end, this section is top stitched closed so that the hem and the cuffs are unmarred by an ugly and unsightly stitch line. This seam I will be ripping open so that I can do my alterations and sew it back up again to give my capelet that same clean look.
here is a photo of me trying on the capelet before I pin and sew everything together to decide if this is really what I want to do with my life. I mean my jacket. Here I am, beginning the process of pinning the seams together. Pro tip, when working with pins and using your mouth as a temporary holding pattern, another seamstress joke, it is better to not be wearing a dark lipstick while working with cream fabric. The lipstick I foolishly chose to wear is Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lip in Allison. If you have never seen a seamstress hold pins in her mouth, she's just never done it in front of you. If you're a seamstress who has held pins in her mouth and accidentally stabbed her tongue or gums with said pins, you do not need to worry about what is in the COVID vaccine. Here is a second try on with pins in place to see if anything will need to be adjusted. Hilariously, despite how short they are on my arms, the sleeves are actually an inch longer than the hem of the jacket body and will need to be shortened accordingly. However, we need to put the rest of it together first, which means finally turning on the sewing machine. I had been wanting to make a capelet of the Royal Chocolate series for a while. I really do love the fabric and I have a beret that matches it super well and I think it would really cute with chest chocolate and ivory. My original plan was to buy one of the skirts or jumper skirts for cheap via Mercari, but when I saw this jacket for about the same price and knew it would take about a tenth of the work and time, I went for it. Overall, it took me about three to four hours of work to convert this jacket into a capelet. And now for a quick test fit to see how it looks sewn. I don't know why, but sometimes a garment looks totally different sewn versus pinned. I'm also testing the fit at the neck to see if I can tolerate being gently strangled by an angelic pretty garment, or if I'll need to move the buttons over despite my irrational hatred of hand sewing. Also, can we talk about how cute that little melty detail is on the pocket flaps in the back? Now I'm just popping a few stitches on the trim detail so I can take apart the cuff of the sleeve and attach it properly to the side seams of the hem. What I will need to do is shorten the outer shell of the sleeve to match the length of the coat body as well as shortening the lining to match. Because this has a facing, however, I will be removing the strip of facing material, shortening the poly lining, and reattaching the facing at the lace trim before sewing it all together. This is a fast and clean way to do it and the end result will be flawless. While I'm inside the sleeve, I'm trimming away whatever excess there was at the shoulders where I attached everything together, as I've determined it's a good fit and I am cleared to start making irreversible changes. I also had to lengthen the darts at the shoulder and will have to trim away some of that excess as well. So now I have removed the facing from one cuff lining. To shorten the lining, I measure how long the lining and facing of the sleeve were compared to the bodies, including the seam allowance. I'm using a hem ruler, which is basically a regular ruler that was cut in half, and a marking pencil to create my cut line. I then reattach the facing to the lining at that cut line, because once I sew the facing down, following its original stitch line, it will have a matching seam allowance to the side seam lining. Let's take a moment to admire the manicure I had that week. If that doesn't work, taunt the camera's autofocus with your project as if it's an angry bull. Once I knew the measurements were good, I cut off the excess lining and then reattached the sleeve facing to the sleeve lining, then pinned it to the body lining, no Mr. Hand jokes please, and sewed it together at what is now a side seam. Repeat this on the other side.
It would be great if this footage was in focus. Random thought, why haven't any seamstresses used the joke roll that beautiful seam footage? Is it too obscure? Is it because the only beautiful seams are those four corner seams on pants when you get them all to line up perfectly on the first try? I finally got smart and changed my camera's focus to manual instead of auto. Oh, I didn't mention this earlier, but press your seams after sewing if you don't want to look like a puffy slob. I did have to create the seam where the sleeve joined with the coat a little more so that it would fall straight and not curvy. I also had to touch up one of the shoulder darts a little. Darts used to be a curse, but now I see their value, as long as it's not chiffon or jersey knit. Take another phone break. You earned it. Finally, when all the sides are together, it's time to sew the hem facing and outer shell together. You'll also want to trim the excess material from the sleeve hem away once you've sewn the outer shell together, which should be about the same amount as the lining layer. Try to cut away the excess in a straight line. The lace trim was originally sewn to the outer shell hem before enclosing the seam, so we'll do that in the name of tradition. I also decided to put on the show Community, which if you haven't seen it, it is worth at least a chance.
I finally figured out that with the belts, I wanted to put one at the back as a fun detail. So I picked one of the cuffs to sacrifice, cut it in half, and inserted it into the back side seam. I pinned them in place, checked the fit, and once I deemed it good, I trimmed away the excess and sewed the seam back together. It was at this time I also decided moving the buttons over wasn't necessary, which was a relief. Finally, at long last, it was time to sew up the hole in the sleeve lining and call it done. Good news? I found the gimbal for my phone. Bad news? I forgot to switch it to landscape. Here we are. This is the completed garment. Uh, these seams here, that's where the sleeves originally were. I also added some darts at the shoulders to help it lay a little better. I didn't have to move any buttons, any snaps. I just, yeah, popped the seams open and sewed them back closed. I also did end up using the buckles. I used one of them. I added a cute little back detail that I'll have in some of the uh, extra footage that I shot just to show that off. All in all, it was a few hour project. It's gonna be super cute for winter, especially with chest chocolate. And I do have a beret that matches. It's made out of a similar embroidered fabric. So I'm pretty excited about that. I've always wanted more capelets in Lolita fashion. And I really love the texture of this sort of print from Angelic Pretty. So I'm pretty excited that I got to combine the two into one. That is all I have for today. I know it was just kind of a quicker video, not really a whole lot of content going on. I do hope to be doing a little bit more variety while I'm off for the next couple of weeks for work, for the holidays. This was pretty fun, quick and easy sew, pretty happy with it, and it's nice and comfy. If you have any questions or concerns, drop a comment below. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Have a happy holiday, however you choose to spend it. Be safe, wash your hands, and take care. Don't you dare. I know. I got a Yeti microphone for Christmas, and now I'm a real YouTuber, just like Jake Paul, only with less money and less entitlement.